That's your intro music. <laughs> That's my intro music now. Okay. That's maybe maybe next time we'll get better intro music. This is the time for empty courtesies. No, uh, forty millions an insult, and we all know it. Tell Mr. Spielberg to get back to me when he's serious. Okay. Yeah. Bye. Sorry. Go ahead. You good? You good now? Good. Okay. All right. Stephen Bruce and his phone and me will be discussing his book, 500 Years After, in a read-along commentary format. Today, we are on chapter the 12th, which I didn't properly bookmark. However, that chapter is titled Chapter the 12th, which treats of social unrest, both in general and in specific, and discusses certain possible responses by authority to such occurrences. Okay, so here's where we need to provide a bit of a content note because this chapter is about a riot, maybe, if you choose to call it that. There are several other words. Several other words, yes. Uh, possible disturbances, things like that. Uh, we both live in Minneapolis, Minnesota, and if you pay attention to mundane world recent events, there's been a bit of unrest here in the last month. Uh, so this was a particularly poignant chapter. It was actually one of the more difficult chapters to write too. It was, um, there was a little struggle there, which is unusual in Parthi books, just trying to hit the right tone and, uh, you know, keep the, the feel of the book and the, the sort of, I don't know, lighthearted flippancy under it, if you will but not too far. It was, uh, I remember working on it. I think the, um, in fairly quick succession, you get kind of a juxtaposition of um, Coburn and his friends coming across the ambush. Um, so you've got the guards stretched out dead on the ground, or mostly dead, it's not the same. And then within a couple of pages, you get to the part where uh, Parfi violently and cruelly flips us over to the jealous thoughts of the consort. And so you just kind of, like, that's kind of a nice juxtaposition showing that balance of action, gravity, dead guardsmen whose name we don't even know through history versus the consort being mad that Illyra is prettier than her. Part of what of what if I put my tongue in my cheek, I guess I could call the serious content of these books just comes from knowing that my readers are aware that they're getting a point of view that is entirely alien. Um, we're seeing, you know, a riot and we're hearing about it from the highest reaches of society. That's whose thoughts we're hearing. And the, the, the disconnect between what's happening to people and the response of the empire, of the, the highest people in the empire. I mean, that's what the reader is supposed to fill in. It's interesting because as you were saying that, I was thinking about how my experience of recent events here more closely resembled that of the consort and the emperor. How so? That's interesting. Well, so we have modern unrest. We have Twitter. We have things like that. So when things were happening here in Minneapolis, I was... Uh, watching Twitter videos. I was watching Unicorn Riot. Um, I was watching things happen from a remove, not really knowing what was going on, even though it's, you know, a mile or two or three from where I am right then. It's going on in my city. There are buildings burning down. There's uh, National Guardsmen shooting people in the street. But I'm watching it from this remove. 
right. sort of sitting there waiting for news, wondering what's going to happen, but all the while not really feeling like my bit of the city is going to be involved. Right. We were, uh, yeah, we're a little closer here, uh, a little nervous. I mean, you know, and the thing is that from the times I Four went... Four blocks here. From the time I went out there um, and my memory of way back in the 60s and 70s, the confusion and lack of real organization is what stands out. And I remembered that part clearly enough that that's some of what came across is the uh, and that's, you know, we're, mo we're seeing that mostly through Coverin's viewpoint, who is, has the job of restoring order, uh, and is trying, and, and he's trying to make sense of it. And it's, I mean, when you're in it, it doesn't make sense. There's, or in, it doesn't make typical sense. You have to work to make sense of what's going on. Uh, it's a lot of confusion, a lot of, you know. You yeah, even just being on the ground in like a, a protest action, you only know what's happening right Right around there. you, yeah. yeah. And, and from my understanding of pitched battles, uh, military operations. There's no way to know that big that's picture the, that, viewpoint. Yeah, that's, that's, the, that's the impression I get too, is, is you know what's going on immediately around you. Um, and you're hoping it will make sense to the people who are giving you orders. <laughs> yeah. Well, and that's something that I've appreciated about your writing in general, if I can be nice to you for a moment. I guess. Uh, thanks. Appreciate that. Um, just that whether you're writing about like Wash in that fanfic that you did uh, running the ship or Vlad doing some bit of witchcraft um, or Kavran in a battle. There's, to me, always a sense of this big picture storytelling, but also we get these pieces of what it's like on a more granular level for the character. And I've always enjoyed that as a fan that, that we get sort of both. And you can tell when you're getting witch and it balances. When um, my first book came out, my um, aunt read it. This is my aunt Ray, who was sort of oh, earth mother hippie, except a generation older than the hippies sort of when it was going on, but, but that kind of feel. And she asked me why there was so much violence. And I gave her a flippant dismissive answer, which I regret. Um, the actual reason and part of the reason that I, I love writing and reading adventure fiction is I have this fascination for what is happening inside someone's head in a moment of crisis. So anytime I get to do that... We, we don't have moments of crisis. We have moments of unusual interest. Exactly. Yes. yes. Thank you, Madison Plays. <laughs> <laughs> Anytime I get to do that, I'm it, I'm just really pulled in. Mm -hmm. And with luck, so is the reader. If not, I'm not doing my job. Well, you know, I think I think you do your job tolerably well. Tolerably well. Thank you. Your I'll your books that. have a tolerable amount of words in them. Yes. And so this has been chapter 12. Uh, unless Steve has anything to add. Oh, that's perfect. Uh, we'll see you next time for chapter 13, uh, when hopefully we'll both be wearing shirts again. Oh, hang on. Spielberg's calling again. Oh, shut up. <sighs> <laughs>